Dying for Answers. It's the last of a five-part series of a family's search for answers in the death of Daniel Diaz and how police conducts in-custody death investigations. Today, we're exploring the character traits of El Pasoans would like to see in the new El Paso Chief of Police. KTSM 90s reporter Carla Drexler joins us. And Carla, this is the last part of the investigative report and looks into the future. That is right, Estella. After an in-depth investigation into use of force and in-custody death, specifically revolving around Daniel Diaz, we asked his family, local attorneys, and a city representative what they want in a new police chief and what change they want to see. It started a few months ago. We're seeing a lot of change, and it is going to take a long time. We have certainly have concerns about the transparency of this process in, in reaching these four finalists. And I don't think it's been made uh, very transparent to the public at all how that selection process took place. There was a survey that went out to the public, but that is about it in terms of public involvement that we're aware of. So why were there no female finalists? And what are we doing? Um, if we didn't have anyone who qualified in our force, what are we doing to build up women in the force? Well, we've heard that that's been an issue over and over. Who in the community was allowed to sit at the table and help select these four candidates? Who were they? How were they able to influence and have their voices heard? I have no idea. I have heard a lot of concerns about it. Um, I've heard concerns from other council members, um, but it is within the purview of the acting city manager. Um, I do not have oversight over how um, that process goes. We were able to give our input at the beginning. A different city manager was there at the time. The process took off under them. Um, and so how much of my input was put, you know, actually put into action um, was limited. And why is it that three of the four finalists, two of the four finalists work basically with Chief Allen throughout the entirety of his tenure as chief, as seconds in command, one with regards to training and the other with regards to discipline. Two federal district court judges issue each of them 100 page plus decisions laying out our evidence, the evidence that the family had. Those two judges uh, provided a roadmap of one, where the problems in the department are and what needs to be changed. My questions for all four candidates, did you read those decisions? and what is your response? How are they planning not to hide these situations, how to change policy? Because this is not the first and the last one, and I hope it is the last one, but You're right. I think it's gonna to continue to happen, so just to bring the right uh, police chief and to really hold people accountable for them to really do what they have to do. This part concludes our Dying for Answers investigative series with a look into the future. Who will be the next El Paso police chief? We will find that out tomorrow. You can watch all the prior parts on our website, ktsm.com, under the tab names, Dying for Answers. In studio, I'm Carla Draxler. Back to you. And make sure you watch Carla's special Dying for Answers online at ktsm.com. And thank you very much, Carla.